Greetings again, my name is Rob Sampson and today we're going to talk about lesson 7 which is using very clear, clean notes in our painting. By notes I mean those dabs of colour. Rather than washing like a wall, like you're painting a wall, we're going to, in impressionistic painting we're talking about painting with little bright colours that together make a harmony. So let's look at two, uh, at two very famous impressionistic paintings from the painters from the region. The first is a painter who paints a lot in the Karakoram Mountains, Yahweh Yeramayan. He's actually Armenian. And let's just look closely as you look from far away and then look closely at his painting of some mountains. Check out the color notes, the wide variety of colors that go and harmonize to make this fantastic picture. And secondly, let's do the same thing with another, uh, originally a Karachi artist, Masood Umar, who paints impressionistic landscapes. Again, let's just look from far away and then see the small detailed color notes that work together for his painting. I've chosen a picture, picture today that I took some time ago of a beautiful village on the top of a mountain in Suat and the picture is way too big. The, the, the panorama, the, uh, you couldn't paint it easily, it would be very small and fiddly. So the first thing to do is to choose some part of the picture that you like, blow it up, enlarge it 200, 300% and try and adjust it so that you've got something in the magic third. So an absolutely fantastically useful tool is to take a picture you're interested in, drop it into an editing program and that most computers have them free see if it has an option to do a painting style transformation. Um, so that's what I did for this picture and it's fantastically helpful for oil painting. It starts to get you to see the individual color notes. Before we begin any painting you just want to absorb and look and see what is there. <clears throat> so the, your artist's eye is starting to develop. The first phase that we're going to look at is how to do that wonderfully muted background. And we've already talked about atmospheric perspective. Things that are far away tend to be bluish. So we're looking for blues. See how the picture is made from individual color notes not from a wash and what we do is play with that put it down and see if you're happy with it or not
let's look at the foreground. So we have the background that's kind of faded. We're not doing any detail. It's kind of just holding the main picture in place. We can add a little bit of changes and detail. After you've done the main painting, you can come back and adjust. But you've got the basic idea of what you're trying to do. Uh, when you look at the foreground, you notice it's bright. The colors are very clean and the yellow's intense. The sunlight is just, it's afternoon sunlight coming from the left side. Let's again, start with the darks and we're going to go more dark than you think to start with and then lighten it up. So basically in these pictures you have the darks and then the lights and then the middle. And you remember when we did the Tonga picture in Peshawar, a lot of you did the brights and the lights but you never did the middle. Um, you can do them in any sequence. Most people normally do dark, middle, light. But in this case the architecture is quite complicated and I would recommend doing those lovely bright lights. So focus, kind of squint your eyes up and see where you can see the reflection of the mud walls. Everybody knows what a mud wall kind of feels like, but look closely at the colors of just the sunlight part and you see it's white with just a little hint of something. Is it yellow ochre? Well, let's experiment. So when you're working with this, you want to be a big quantity, you don't, you don't want to have to figure it out later. Who knows what color that is. Um, this just yellow ochre by itself, it's not bright enough, so in that case add a little bit of your, tiny bit of your cadmium yellow. See if you can get match that brightness. The architecture is remarkably complex and it's a lot easier now to paint from the back and go forward and if you find a good color keep it uh, that you can use later. So make big quantities and look carefully at one building after another. Don't confuse yourself with science. Look for all the colors that are there. So we'll start with this top left corner, do you notice how incredibly complex and varied the colors are? And so on our palette now, <coughs> we're going to have um, a wide, wide range of colors ready to go.
So same thing, we're just gonna continue, keep going with exactly the same pattern, one house at a time. If you try to do it too much at one time, you'll get confused, you'll confuse yourself. So I'm gonna choose this, this one, stop, tighten up that beam a little bit. Keep always looking at the original. And then I need a house, a nice color for the, um, the wall of the house. And you see how much variety there is. Comes down to there. The trick is just to keep going steadily and slowly and then as things, as you learn things from your different color notes, use those consistently to get a unity. So uh, for instance the doors and the dark shadows, sometimes you just have to keep on going over them. Once you get a feel for what that tone is. Um, just keep working at it. So we have a kind of blocked in, we haven't got the very bright yet, and no detail. Um, I think it's time to put a bit of green in just to get a feel of what it looks like. So I would normally start with the areas where the shadow of the green is. to add the very bright, uh, wonderful colors into the painting. And again, this is color notes, so we need to be careful that everything's super clean and um, we're just turning the place into light. So there's a tree here. much, much brighter than the blues in the background. Um, we'll also see, you'll also see there are little bushes, bright things here and there, and it just suggestion of these vegetation is all that's needed. And as soon as you start doing this, something like, something amazing happens in the painting. It's hard for me to describe exactly, but when you add these harmonious colors, suddenly it's like, ah, it makes sense. Um, so now we're gonna go slowly adding 
lighter colors, the brighter colors, um, mixing carefully. I noticed that these dung piles are really a nice color. And I've got them way too dark. And that same color, if you can spot it where it comes somewhere else, adds a harmony that we're looking for in the painting. See how abandoned my brush strokes are? Okay, it's that time. <clears throat> White with a tiny bit of yellow or brown. We're gonna throw in these fantastic <clears throat> rooftop colors. Edge of the palette knife with gay abandon. Suddenly when you start to do this, the village comes alive. Thick, thick paint. No hesitation. Wherever we're seeing where the sun's hitting the mud roof or the wall. <clears throat> All of your hard work for the tones starts to pay off. The palette knife is also wonderful for picking up little bright highlights. Picking a bit of the yellow. Don't overdo it because it will overpower your painting, but a little bit of the dark wooden beams can also be emphasized with a palette knife because it's nice and straight. But like I said, be careful. If you put these on too thick, uh, it will totally overpower your painting. Um, they're very, very powerful. Now at this point you look at it and you think, okay, so what's, what do I like and what don't I like? And yeah, if there are any other highlights that you want to add um, or colors, this is the last final little fiddly thing that can make or break a painting. So for example, I noticed that there are some people or some clothes or something in this painting, uh, a nice red somewhere here. And these little color marks um, look carefully to see where there's some similar color, just little points, don't overdo it. Um, just add a little bit of depth and interest of some color notes in your painting. Um, it's a constant adjustment and you're never going to be satisfied with it, but at some point you have to say, okay, that's it. If you do, like that red was too much, then just paint over it. Leave it a bit toned down. 